Hey math students, it must be like inequality day because just about everybody I've seen today asking questions in our group's been asking about how to solve inequalities. So I do have a full length video on this um, that gives a full lesson on it, but I will just work through this problem. So once again, um, the rules for solving linear equations and linear inequalities are almost exactly the same. So I'll follow the big three principles um, of solving any linear equation or inequality. And that is first, if you can do any um, forwards math, any simplifying on uh, the individual expressions. So the left hand side and the right hand side in this case, this is just two sided. So we have an expression on the left of the inequality symbol. We have an expression on the right of the inequality symbol. If you see any math you know how to do on either of those sides, you should go ahead and do them. That's the first step. And I do indeed see math I know how to do. And it looks like the student who posted this, um, I don't know how to say your name, Elisha, maybe. Elisha. I'm not quite sure. But she was stuck not knowing what was happening here. So do you see, my dear, how this three is shoved up against the parentheses? Whenever you have a three shoved up against a set of parentheses, what I'm saying here is that this number out front is multiplying by everything inside the parentheses. Every term is what we call those things inside the parentheses. Okay, so this 3 is multiplying with two different numbers. First of all, it's multiplying with an x. Well, what do you get if you multiply 3 times x? You just get 3 x's. And so you just shove them up real tight like that to say they're multiplying. But this 3 is multiplying by both the terms in the parentheses. So it is also multiplying with that plus 2 or positive 2. Um, when it's multiplying, I think of it as a positive 2. So 3 times positive 2 is positive 6. And that's the simplifying I can do on the right-hand side. Now, on the left-hand side, there's no simplifying I can do. The 5 is already shoved up against the x, signifying that they're multiplying. And I cannot currently do this addition because these are not like terms. We can only add and subtract like terms. And so all I can do is just drop this expression, 5x plus 8. And I've done nothing to make me want to change the inequality sign, so I'll just leave that right there, is less than that sign. So that's my first step. Your second step when solving linear equations and linear inequalities is you want to make sure that you have all the variable terms on the same side. You want to have all the letters on the same side. And when I'm solving inequalities, I like that side to be the left. Does it have to be the left? No, it just makes my life easier in the long run. So basically, what I'm talking about, you might be going, Kate, what are you talking about? Notice, do you see how there's an X on the left-hand side of the inequality sign and on the right-hand side of the inequality sign? I need all those X's over on one side. I want them on the left, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away the three x's that are on the right-hand side. I'm just going to subtract them away so they go away. A lot of students don't realize that they have this power, but anytime you have an equation or an inequality, you have the power to do whatever you want as long as you do it to both sides. All the expressions need to see the same change so that their relationship will remain the same. And so I will come over here, subtract 3x on the other side of the inequality. Notice where I wrote that minus 3x. I wrote it right underneath the 5x because I know they're like terms so they can add and subtract. Now this is the balance change that I'm making to both sides of my equation. Um, now it's, or I shouldn't say equation, I'm sorry, that's an inequality. But that's the balance change I'm making to both sides of my inequality. Now I have to see what my new inequality will be after making that change. So my old inequality had 5x, but I just took away 3x's, so now I'll only have 2x's left. My old inequality had a plus 8, and I haven't changed that, so it's still there. I haven't done anything to make me want to flip an inequality sign or change it in any way. Those do flip occasionally, by the way, but it's not going to come up in this problem. Um, 3x, take away 3x, is just going to zero out. There's nothing left there. So, I mean, I could write 0 plus 6, but why would I? I'm a lazy mathematician, and I know that if I have 0 adding with anything, it's only going to be that same thing. And so I just drop the positive 6. 
Notice I don't even need the plus sign out front because I know that if I don't see a symbol, it's positive. Great. Now the third step, once you get the variables or the letters on one side of the inequality, you're going to work to get the letter alone. We call that isolating the variable. You want to move all the numbers away so that the letter is alone on its side. So isolate the variable, get the letter alone. So I have two numbers to get rid of in order for my variable to be alone. There's a two over here on this side of the inequality with X and there's an eight. I've got to get rid of them both. Remember when you're isolating the variable, you need to work the order of operations backwards, backwards. So we'll actually move anything that's adding or subtracting first. So this eight is adding, so I'll subtract eight. I'll subtract eight from both sides. Okay, now again, I can make any change I want as long as I do it to both sides. That's my balance change again. And every time you make a balance change, you need to put in a line afterwards that says what your new inequality will be. So on the left-hand side, adding eight and subtracting eight zeros out. So all I'm left with is two X. And on the right-hand side, if I have only $6 and I go and spend $8, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. I'm in debt, $2. I owe $2. I'm almost done with this equation, but my x is not quite alone. Remember, my goal was to isolate the variable, get it alone. And so I've got to get rid of this, too. Again, in order to get rid of something, you have to do the opposite of what's happening. So what's happening if 2 and x are shoved together like this? They are multiplying. So the opposite of multiply is divide. So I'm going to divide by two. Now the problem didn't tell me to divide by two. I decided to divide by two. I made a change. Anytime you make a change, you got to jump across the inequality sign and balance that change. So that's my balance change. I'm dividing both sides of the equation by, or the inequality by two. Now let's see what our new inequality will be. Multiplying by two and dividing by two are opposites, so they cancel, leaving me with just x. I've done nothing to make my inequality sign flip, so it'll stay the same. And negative two divided by two is negative one. And so my answer to this inequality is x is less than negative one. Now sometimes on the GED, they want the answer in this form. This is called an inequality. And sometimes they want the answer graphed on a number line. So if they asked me to graph it on a number line, I'd bust out my number line. I'd make sure that somewhere on my number line, the number negative one appeared. So negative one, because this is a strictly less than sign, it does not have the little e or equal to underneath. It's just less than. I am going to use an open dot open dot because of the strictly less than symbol. And then I'm going to go to the left. See how this little arrow less than symbol points left? I'm going to go to the left because anything less than negative one is a good answer to this. All right. Um, I hope that makes sense. If you have any uh, questions, make sure you let me know and I'll do my best to clear them up.